I am presenting Union Gospel Presses Sunday School Lesson Number 2, Sunday, September 11, 2022. The lesson is entitled, Obedient to Remember. Lesson text comes from Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 through 14. Related scriptures are Joshua 5, 8 through 12. 2 Kings 23, 1 through 3, and 21 through 23, Ezra 6, 19 through 22, Luke 22, 7 through 16. The place is Egypt. The time is 1445 BC. There are few events in human history that can compare to God's deliverance of Israel from Egypt. There is no parallel to the smiting of the firstborn of Egypt, the Passover, and the nation born in a, in a day. These facts of history clearly show the hand of God in a dramatic way. God does some things once and does not repeat them. He works some miracles repeatedly, such as the new birth of each person who places his trust in the Lord Jesus' work on the cross. In this instance of God's direct intervention, he did not leave his reasons open to speculation. He delivered Israel because of his promise to Abraham, and he did it in a manner that Israel would always remember. Passover pointed to the ultimate sacrifice of Christ as the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world, but crucified at the proper time on the cross. Today's aim, facts to see clearly the hand of God at work in delivering Israel from Egypt. Principle, to understand that God did this in a unique manner for both Israel and our instruction. Application, to live daily under the sovereignty of a loving, miracle-working God. Illustrating the lesson, it is only by the blood of Christ that God's judgment is withheld as he passes over the believer. Practical points. One, redemption by God always signals a new beginning. Exodus 12, 1 through 2, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Two, the way of redemption needs to be proclaimed to all men. Exodus 12, 3 through 4. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Three, purity of motive and action displays true faith and obedience. Exodus 12, 5 through 6, Isaiah 29, 13. Four, clear directions from God warrant full obedience to God. Exodus 12, 7 through 10, Joshua 1, 8. Five, God is gracious to redeem but he will judge those who are his enemies. Exodus 12, 11 through 13. Six, wise is the man who regularly remembers his redemption by the Lord. Verse 14, golden text. This day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Exodus 12, 14. Today we have two lesson outlines. The first is the importance of the lamb. Exodus 12, 1 through 7. And the second is the importance of the blood. Exodus 12, 8 through 14. Introduction. Believers are often referred to as sheep, which is not an especially complimentary thing. Sheep are not among the most brilliant of animals. They tend to be group oriented and followers rather than leaders. They tend to be quick to panic and flee in the presence of stress, causing shepherds some frantic moments. When John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him, he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, John 1.29. That description seems the opposite of another of Christ's titles, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Jesus perfectly represents these opposites, meekness and submission, along with power and authority. This week's text will give us the background for Jesus being the Lamb. Prior to Exodus 12, nine plagues had occurred and the tenth had been announced. The plagues had become increasingly intense 
and yet Egypt had refused to release God's people to allow them to worship in the wilderness. When God told Moses about the final plague, he assured him that Pharaoh would soon relent and drive Israel out of his country. The importance of the lamb, Exodus 12, 1. And the, and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, verse 2, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you, verse 3. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house, verse 4. And if the household be too, be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man, according to his eating, shall make your count for the lamb. Verse 5. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. Verse 6. And ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Verse 7. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts on, on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Beginning of the year, Exodus 12, 1 through 2. God had sent Aaron out into the wilderness to meet his brother Moses so that they could work as a team in approaching Pharaoh and the children of Israel. 4, 27 through 29. They had informed the people about what God intended to do, and they had gone together to request of Pharaoh the privilege of going into the wilderness to worship God, 5.1. Because of Pharaoh's refusal and subsequent increases, increases in labor, the children of Israel became very unhappy with Moses and Aaron, verses 20 through 21. This month mentioned in Exodus 12.2 is Abib, 13, 4, 23, 15, which was the seventh month of the civil year for the Israel, but was now to become the first month of their religious calendar. After, ba after the Babylonian captivity, the name was changed to Nisan, Nehemiah 2, 1, Esther 3, 7. It corresponds to our modern day months of March and April. Deuteronomy 16.1 says, Observe the month of Abib, and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of Abib the, thy, the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. Moses had just warned Pharaoh of the coming Passover when all of the firstborn of Egypt would die. Exodus 11.4 this final warning went unheeded, partly because by this time God was hardening Pharaoh's heart as a result of Pharaoh's own hardness earlier. Even though he had now been told of the upcoming massive number of deaths throughout Egypt, he would not let the people of Israel leave. This was setting everything up for such a monumental incident that it would change Israel's entire future, and it needed to be remembered forever. This is what was behind the change of Israel's religious calendar. Aviv was about to contain the incident Moses had warned Pharaoh about, followed by the great exodus of Israel. Choosing a Passover lamb, Exodus 12, 3 through 5. The Lord told Moses and Aaron to speak to the entire congregation, but verses 21 through 28 make it clear that they did this through the elders. There is a practical sense in realizing that this would work best, as it would be impossible for these two to communicate with everybody all at once. The first part of the instruction was that each family head was to choose and set aside a lamb on the 10th day of the month. This was the Passover lamb, the most important object that would be used in the approaching Passover. These lambs were going to be eaten by the family groups.
families have always been and continue to be one of the most important human units in God's eyes. God works with mankind today through families, governments, and the church. It is no accident that societies deteriorate when these three areas of life are destroyed. It clearly seems to be the plan of the evil one to destroy mankind by destroying these three facets of our existence. The Passover was going to be, be very much a family activity. Since the lambs were going to be eaten on one particular night and there would be no opportunity for leftovers, there was a problem with families too small to consume a lamb by themselves in the allotted amount of time. In those cases, men were to combine their families with other families and share the lambs. The phrase, every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb, Exodus 12, 4, means that the size of the gathering for the Passover meal would be in line with the number who could normally consume one lamb. It was possible, therefore, that more than two families could share lambs and eat together. If there was only a husband and wife and small children, for example, they could combine with other families. Later, tradition limited the number of people to ten for each Passover lamb. Applying the blood of the Passover lamb, Exodus 12, 6 through 7. The Hebrew word translated lamb allows for either a sheep or a goat. The root idea is an animal sent out to graze. The age, however, was set. The animal had to be a male yearling and it had to be without blemish. This meant it had to be a perfect specimen without physical flaws of any kind and certainly not diseased. These requirements would be repeated to the Israelites later when instruction was given about the sacrifices they were to bring to God. Leviticus 22:18 through 25 gives details. An animal with any kind of defect was not acceptable for either burnt or peace offerings. The requirements are summed up in verse 24. Ye shall not offer unto the Lord that which is bruised or crushed or broken or cut, neither shall ye make any offering thereof in your land. This perfect Passover lamb was to be put aside until the 14th day of the month, at which time it was to be killed in the evening and eaten. Of course, it still needed to meet the requirements at the end of the four days. The emphasis on a perfect lamb looked ahead to the Lamb of God, Jesus, who died for us and who was and is perfect in every way. Hebrews 7, 26 through 27 says of Jesus, for such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily, as those high priests, to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins, and then for the people's. For this he did once, when he offered up himself. This was pictured in the slaying of the Passover lamb and in the application of the blood to the doorposts and lintels of the homes. Everywhere a lamb was being eaten, the blood was to have been applied. The blood would be the means of salvation from the coming of God later that night. Jesus' blood is the only means of our eternal salvation. The importance of the blood. Verse 8. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Verse 9. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the Puritans thereof. Verse 10. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. Verse 11, And thus shall ye eat it, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Verse 12, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both male and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Verse 13. 
and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Verse 14. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Eating the Passover meal, Exodus 12, 8 through 9. The children of Israel were to eat the lamb on the same night on which it was killed, and there were specific instructions accompanying this event. Everything revolved around completing this meal quickly because of what else was going to occur that night. They were told specifically that the lamb was to be roasted. This was so important that it was repeated with added details. They were not to eat it raw or boil it in water. It was to be roasted in fire in its entirety. This instruction was repeated in Deuteronomy 16, 6 through 7, when Moses was reviewing God's commands before his death. But at the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name in, there thou shalt sacrifice the Passover at even, and the going down of the sun at the season that thou camest forth out of Egypt. And thou shalt roast and eat it in the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And thou shalt turn in the morning and go unto thy tents. Along with the lamb, they were to eat unleavened bread and bitter herbs. The unleavened bread was necessary because they were going to have to leave Egypt before the normal leavening process could finish. Eating unleavened bread would always be a reminder of this deliverance. Although it is not explained in the text, the bitter herbs might have been to remind the people of the bitterness of their oppression and suffering while in bondage. The Kyle and Dietrich's commentary on the Old Testament includes this observation. The bitter herbs were to call to mind the bitterness of life experienced by Israel in Egypt, and this bitterness was to be overpowered by the sweet flesh of the lamb, being ready to leave Exodus 12, 10 through 11. If they could not eat the entire lamb, they were supposed to burn in the fire what was left over. The exodus was going to happen quickly, and there was to be nothing left behind of these Passover lambs. The assurance of their, their quick departure was portrayed in the fact that they were to be dressed and ready for rapid movement. They were to have their loins girded with flowing robes pulled up under belts at their waist. They were to eat with sandals on their feet, ready to leave without delay. They were to also have their staffs in their hands so they could simply rise and depart without having to locate them. They were to eat quickly. This was not going to be one of those leisurely times of fellowship and drawn out conversations with friends and family. They needed to get this meal finished as rapidly as possible and be ready to get up and go. As we contemplate the atmosphere surrounding this meal, we can almost imagine the intense excitement for filling the air within each house and among its family members. This was the time prior to the killing of all the firstborn in the land, both people and animals. When that happened at midnight, Moses and Aaron were going to be called upon by Pharaoh to get out of Egypt as quickly as possible, Exodus 12, 31 through 34. There would be no time then for finishing a meal. They would be expected to gather with everyone else and begin their journey immediately. A monumental event was going to occur that very night. Observing the blood, Exodus 12, 12 through 13. Verse 11 concludes by saying, it is the Lord's Passover. Verse 12 explains that God was going to move through the land of Egypt that night and slay every firstborn of both man and beast. The redeeming factor for the Israelites would be the blood they had splashed on their doorposts and lentils. God said this blood would be a token for them, meaning a signal or sign of evidence that they were to be spared from the destruction. When God saw the blood, he would pass over those homes. 
This helps us realize that the blood shed by the Passover lambs was of supreme importance. It was because of this blood that the children of Israel would be saved. It is clear that the putting to death of the lambs pointed ahead to Jesus Christ. When John announced the presence of the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, he was referring to the fulfillment, the antitype of the Old Testament Passover lambs. Paul told the Corinthian believers that even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. 1 Corinthians 5, 7. Paul amplified this by writing, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. 1 Peter 1, 18-19 All those Old Testament killings were fulfilled when Jesus died on the cross, shedding his blood for us. God also executed judgment on all of Egypt's gods that night. The Egyptians served a multitude of gods, many of which were shown to be inept by the plagues. The, the Lord said he was going to execute judgment upon them, stating, I am the Lord, Exodus 12, 12, implying that he was the only God and that all the gods of Egypt were nothing and completely powerless in his presence. The entire procedure of Israel's release from Egypt would certainly be accomplished when Yahweh decided to do it. As the Lord, he was unstoppable. Establishing a memorial, Exodus 12, 14. This initial Passover feast was to become an annual feast observed by the children of Israel from then on. It was to be a memorial, that is, an annual reminder of their deliverance from the bondage of Egypt. In the history of Israel, the Exodus still stands as one of the greatest events ever. It has been estimated that as many as 2.5 million people were involved in that deliverance and the trek through the wilderness. Nothing like this has happened to any other nation. Questions 1. Which month was to be the first of Israel's religious calendar? 2. What act was to take place first in preparation for Israel's deliverance? 3. What were the requirements for the chosen Passover lambs? 4. What was to be done with some of the blood of the Passover lambs? 5. What instructions were given for the meal the people were to eat on the night they killed the lambs? 6. How were the Israelites to be prepared for leaving quickly? 7. What was the event that was going to occur in Egypt that would cause the need for quick response? 8. What was the reason for the placing of blood on the homes? 9. How did all this preparation for departure foreshadow Jesus? 10. How was Israel supposed to remember this event from then on? This concludes the Sunday School lesson for Sunday, September 11, 2022. Thank you for listening. God bless.